Welcome to the inverses of functions. Today I want to show you how to find the inverse of a function. Now, before we start with the inverses of functions, I want to quickly remind you or um, go back through uh, what exactly a function is. Now, remember a function is a special type of relationship um, between usually, like I said, between two variables sometimes. Um, it can be between two sets. Here I have a set A, B, C, and I have a set 1, 2, 3, and um, the set A and set B. And for them to be a function, what we have to know is, remember, it's our input and our output. Remember, for a function, we plug something in, and then we get something uniquely out. So on the mapping, which I'm going to show you here, for a mapping to be a function, whatever my input is has to uniquely go to one value in, um, in the output. Now, A could go to 1, but A cannot go to any other element in the output. We could say that B could, go to, B could also go to 1 because it uniquely goes to 1, but it just cannot go to, to 1 and 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show a function that is going to be a 1 to 1 relationship, meaning all of my elements uniquely go to one, el um, one element in the output, and they don't go to two of them. Now, this is a function. This is what we call a 1 to 1 function. However, we could also say that C could also go to 2. Now, that would still be a function because my input C is still giving me a unique output 2. Um, and even though B also goes to 2, they're uniquely mapping to 2. As long as my input does not go to two different outputs, it's okay. It's still a function. However, we have a problem, though. Since my input is now going to, or I'm sorry, I have two different inputs going to the same output, I'm not going to have a one-to-one -one relationship. And when I don't have a one-to-one -one relationship, I cannot find the inverse of the function. So you might say, well, let me show me an example of that and prove it. Okay, well, let's take a look at the equation or the function f, f of x equals x squared. Now, we know that that's going to be a parabola, right? So if I look at the two points, negative 2 and 2, you guys should be able to determine that those are going to both have the same output of 4, right? Well, so it's not a one-to-one -one relationship, right? These don't uniquely, A doesn't go to 1 and 1 doesn't go to A, so it's not going to provide me an inverse. Now, before I get into how to graphing them, I want to quickly kind of go over a little bit more about the sets and what function and an inverse function is um, before I get to it. So let's just remember a function, all right, is a mapping from your domain to your range. Now, my A is going to represent my domain and B is going to represent my domain. Oh, I'm sorry, my range. Now, the inverse of that function is going to be when we kind of flip-flop them. We're going to switch them around. So now, instead of mapping from A to B, I'm going to map from B to A, where B now is my domain and A is going to be my range. So how does this kind of look like in a graph, right? Well, it's very easy to show with coordinate points. We know that a coordinate point x, y, where x is going to be in your domain, it's going to be right, your, your domain is your set of all x values. So x is part of your domain, and y is going to be part of your range, or your output. Well, if I was to flip these around and say, now I want my 2 to be part of my domain, and my y, or my x, to now be my y. So if I flip these, what we say is we flip them over the x, y line. And so that's this little dotted line that has, uh, has the equation y equals x. So you find your inverse graphically you can reflect over the xy lane because all you're doing is you're flip-flopping your x and your y coordinates or your domain and range. So how does that look for a parabola? Well, if I was going to reflect my parabola over my xy line, it looks something like this. And if you remember, one way that we can determine if a function or if a graph is a function, um, we could use the vertical line test. Obviously, this passes the vertical line test. But here we notice this graph does obviously does not pass the vertical line test as I have an x value that has two different y values. So hopefully that's just a little bit of background for you guys to find the function and the inverse of the function. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you kind of four steps or three steps really that we're going to follow to find the function for or find the inverse for any function given. So those steps are replace your f of x with y. This just helps us algebraically do our work. Then we're going to swap our x and y. And what this does is this is just like I showed you up there. You know, instead of doing A to B, we're now going to do from B to A. So we're going to flip them up. Then we're going to solve for Y. Then we replace our Y with our F inverse of X. Then lastly, we're going to verify. And that's going to be in another video. So we'll just work on the th first three steps. So let's look at our first problem, which says F of X equals X minus 7. 
So the first thing you may want to do is replace f of x with y. And remember, f of x and y, they mean the same thing. They're both going to represent our output values. So now I have y equals x minus 7. Now I flip my x and my y. And then simply solve for y. And now lastly, what I need to do is, now I've just found out the inverse, so I need to make sure I'm using my correct notation. So I'll write f inverse of x equals x plus 7. And there we go. Now I've found out the inverse. Uh, for problem number 2, this one's a little bit different. Now we have a rational, uh, rational function here. So I'm going to have y equals x minus 1 over 5. Remember, whenever we have a number on the denominator, what we're saying is we're dividing by 5. So to undo division by 5, we need to multiply by 5. But I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Before we do that, we need to make sure we flop, switch our x's and our y's. Now, this is going to take a little bit of room, so I'm just going to make that switch right now. Now, we know that we're dividing by 5, so we want to make sure we multiply by 5 on both sides. Therefore, we have 5x equals y minus 1. Now, to get rid of the 1, we add 1 to both sides. And I'm left with 5x plus 1 equals y. Now, we found the inverse, so we need to make sure we use the correct notation. Okay? For number 3, we have a, a cube. Same thing that's going to apply. y equals x cubed plus 2. Replace our swap our x and y's, so x equals y cubed plus 2. So now I subtract the 2, so I have x minus 2 equals y cubed. Then to get rid of a cube root, or sorry, to get rid of the, the power of the cube, I need to take the cube root. So the cube root of x minus 2 equals y. Write it in correct notation, f inverse of x equals the cube root of x minus 2. Okay? Lastly, for number 4, what we'll notice is we'll swap our y's and for our f of x, then I have x squared plus 4. Now to get rid of the square root, I'm going to square both sides. So therefore I have y squared equals x squared plus 4. Subtract 4 on both sides. Now, to solve for x, I'm sorry, did I not flap them? I didn't switch them again. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little lazy for you guys. So we have y squared equals x squared minus 4. Sorry, I'm getting lazy. Um, so now, I need to solve for y, I need to take the square root. And we automatically have a problem. Because remember, ladies and gentlemen, whenever we're solving and we take the square root, we're going to have a plus and a minus, correct? So y equals plus or minus the square root of x squared minus 4. And automatically, now we have two values for our y. So no matter what x I plug in, I'm going to have two values, a plus and a minus. Therefore, this has no inverse. Okay, So we've got to make sure whenever we're taking the square root, we're not going to be able to have an inverse. Now, there are ways to get around this. We could create, we could create an inverse by um, giving it certain values, saying like, you know, certain restrictions, saying our only when our x values are... Uh, you know, greater than zero or greater than four. So we can put restrictions on there. But if there's no restrictions and you're solving, you're getting a plus and a minus by taking the square root, there's going to be no inverse. So now what I'd like to do is uh, I want to write up some problems and I want you guys to try to see if you can find out the inverse. So let me go and clear out the board, give you up some problems, and then we'll give it a shot.
Okay, what I'd like you to do is quickly write down those problems. Give a sense about about 10, 15 minutes, whatever you need. Um, to, maybe not 15 minutes, hopefully not. Uh, we'll see. Um, but give yourself some time to write those down. And then what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll show you guys the answers. Okay, here I am back again. So hopefully you guys, I kept this up here for you so you guys can keep on going back um, and review off it. So let's go back and study it again and just follow those steps. First thing, replace f of x with y. Second thing, swap our x and our y and then solve for y. And third, replace our y with our f inverse of x. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, in the first problem, swap this for f of x for y. Then, secondly, what I'm going to have to do now is swap my x and y's, and don't be lazy like I was. Now, I just seem need to simply solve for y. So I'm going to subtract the 1. So I say y equals x minus 1 plus 3. Now be careful, make sure that we always want to make sure we use our correct notation by using f inverse. There we go. So our final answer is f inverse of x equals x minus 1 divided by 3. Lastly for this one, not lastly, but let's plug in a y equals 6x. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. y equals 6x. Swap our x and our y's. x equals 6y. Divide by 6. y equals x over 6. Put it in correct notation. We have f inverse of x equals x over 6. Next problem. f of x equals x to the fifth minus 1. Simply all I need to do here is write y equals x to the fifth minus 1. Okay. Now, swap our x and our y's. Then, I'm going to add 1. So I have x plus 1 equals y to the fifth. Take the fifth root on both sides. And then you have fifth root um, is going to equal x, or fifth root over x plus 1 equals y. Let's use the correct notation. F inverse of x equals the fifth root of x plus 1. Lastly, we have f of x equals x cubed over divided by 8. Um, I swap y equals x cubed over 8. Swap my x and my y's. Okay, then I multiply by 8 on both sides. So I get 8x equals y cubed. Take the cube root of y. And I'm just going to kind of quickly write it in there. So therefore, I know that f inverse... Uh, of x is going to equal the cube root of 8 we know is 2. So it would be 2 times the cube root of x. Okay? Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, well, cube root of 2 times x. I'll just actually write in there. Cube root of 8 times x. And like I said, I can simplify that, but I just want to make sure you guys see exactly where my points are. And that's going to be your... Uh, your answer for there. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen. So that's how you find the inverse. I hope you uh, found this uh, video information helpful for you. Make sure you uh, check out my videos at uh, freemathvideos.com. And uh, best of luck. You keep on working through it.